Hello, this week I wanted to share with you some really, really basic art style terms that you may have heard before. I'm sharing these because I have found them to be either not understood or misused very, very frequently, um, especially when teaching some art classes. So hopefully you find this useful and it, it might be super basic if you're already into art, but I'm sure there's someone out there who might benefit from this. For each term, I've chosen a couple of artworks that I think are good examples. All the artworks are credited to the original artists and the images are available to use under public domain or the Creative Commons license. Style, the distinctive characteristics which permit the grouping of works into related categories or make an artist's work identifiable. The Italian Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci, one of my personal favorites, used muted color palettes and smooth smoky shadows known as fumato in his oil paintings, which can be seen in these works, the very famous Mona Lisa that was painted between the years 1503 and 1506, and his Virgin on the Rocks, painted between somewhere around 1483 and 1486. You can see the soft shadows all over the figures, the way he models his women, they're all quite similar, and it immediately makes his work recognizable. Of course, there are other characteristics that define his style, but we'll move on to the next example. The Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh's distinctive style is characterized by his bold brushstrokes, his bright colors, and the thick application of paint. Here in his Café Terrace at Night from 1888, you can see the similarities to one of his other very famous works, The Starry Night, painted in 1889. Style can also be shared among many artists with a specific purpose. An art movement is a tendency or style in art with specific common philosophy or goal, followed by a group of artists during a specific time period, usually a few months, years, or decades. An example of this is Art Nouveau, where long sinuous lines and ornamental details made their way into the paintings, illustrations, and even architecture of the time. One of the most famous artists from this movement, Alphonse Mucha, is shown here. In this illustration by Aubrey Beardsley, you can see how the movement style crosses over into his personal style. While it looks nothing like Mucha's work, you can see the similarities with the long, curvy lines, floral components, and repetitive design. The Art Nouveau style also made its way into furniture and architecture, as seen in this gate, created in 1893 to 1895 by Hector Guimard. Impressionism is another example of an art movement with a distinct style. This 19th century art movement is characterized by relatively small, thin, yet visible brushstrokes, open composition, emphasis on accurate depiction of light and its changing qualities, often accentuating the effects of the passage of time, ordinary subject matter, inclusion of movement as a crucial element of human perception and experience, and unusual visual angles. Impressionism originated with a group of Paris-based artists whose independent exhibitions brought them to prominence during the 1870s and the 1880s. Realism is the attempt to represent a subject matter truthfully, without any distortions or elaborations. Realism has been prevalent in the arts at many periods and can be in large part a matter of technique and training and the avoidance of stylization. It can be described as linear, tight, or controlled. Stylization, or stylized, refers to the visual depictions that use simplified ways or intentional distortions of representing objects or scenes that do not attempt a full, precise, and accurate representation of what they actually look like, preferring an attractive or expressive overall depiction. Painterly, characterized by qualities of color, stroke, and texture rather than of line. This means that you can usually see the brush strokes, the hand of the painter makes its way into the piece itself. It can be described as loose or sketchy. While Rembrandt's style was quite varied, he did a number of works with his painterly style. His brushwork is clearly visible, like in this self-portrait. But the term painterly can also be used to describe drawings and sculpture, where the artist's mark making is still visible in the final piece, such as this drawing by John Singer Sargent. Abstract. 
non-representational works of art that do not depict scenes or objects in the world, or have a discernible subject matter. Kandinsky was a famous abstract artist, as was Jackson Pollock. Abstraction. Abstraction is about painting the essence of a subject as the artist interprets it, rather than the visible details. A painter may reduce the subject to its dominant colors, shapes, or pattern, but not take it as far as a full abstract such as the ones we just viewed. These don't look the least bit real, and yet there's no doubt as to what they are supposed to represent. Or an artist might remove the subject from its context or enlarge its scale, as Georgia O'Keeffe did in her work. Her flowers and shells, stripped of their fine detail, floating against abstract backgrounds, can resemble dreamy landscapes. Photorealism or Hyperrealism Hyperrealism is a genre of painting or in sculpture resembling a high-resolution photograph. Here we have a sculpture by the artist Ron Muick. The level of detail is extraordinary and looks quite real, but it is done on a massive scale. This sculpture by Carol A. Froyman, The Midpoint, might cause passerbyers to do a double take, not sure whether there is a live woman sitting there or not. If you like this video and you would like me to discuss more art styles and movements, make sure to let me know down below. Leave me a comment or just like it, and then don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you actually get notified when I make that video or any other future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.